So you have a direct spiritual lineage, uh, and it's through spiritual master Osho, isn't it? Yes, I believe that that is um, how I received um, the spiritual essence, yes. I mean, actually, I, I don't want to say that because at many years before I even heard of him, something happened to me that caused me to go seeking that, not knowing that that's what it was I was seeking. Once I met him and many years after, I, I, I realized that um, that's what it was. And um, But I was conscious when I met him that he was the person who could teach me how to be grounded and centered in that spiritual essence. That much I knew before I even met him because it was introduced to me by a practice I did for about five years of deep breathing every night before I went to bed. And there's a whole story behind that, but I just learned to do this kind of deep relaxation every night before I went to bed from the ages of 12 to 17. That ended up in this kind of atomic explosion of consciousness, Satori, that took three weeks for me to come actually back in my body. I was actually above my head for three weeks watching everything and could kind of see and understand everything. <clears throat> but uh, that I was so young, it disappeared after three weeks when an old friend came in to, I hadn't seen in a while, came in and, and uh, asked me a very pointed question. And I immediately landed back in my body and it was gone. And then I knew without a doubt I needed to, because I was, I was living something that was just mystical in the most indescribably beautiful way, just incredible way. Uh, but I couldn't hold it. I couldn't maintain it. So I needed to find somebody. And I started to ask my mom and she, um, she was beautiful. She introduced me to the Tao Te Ching from Lao Tzu, the Dhammapada of Buddha, all these beautiful writings from enlightened beings. And I, at one point I said, do you know of anybody who's alive like that? I don't know where that question came from, but I, but I had found the answer myself. It was so weird. <clears throat> that I this karate school I had went to when I was younger with my brother and a best friend at the time, the same best friend who walked into the room when I came back into my body. So funny, we all took karate together at this one karate school back in 1973-74. And uh, I went back to it years later and the girlfriend of the guy who ran the school had already been to o Osho in India and met him two times and spent quite a bit of time around. When I got around her, something happened, a transmission. One day she hung Osho's mala around my neck and I went, oh my God. And she, and, and I, and she said, you can't have it. That's my mala, but what do you think? How would you like one of these? And that's how I was initiated. I wrote to India at the time I was living in San Diego and um, studying martial arts and yoga and med Osho meditations and all these things years later at the same karate school, which before then was just a karate school. And years later, it became uh, something else. So it was all kind of like these strange coincidences. It's not like, and then uh, next thing I knew, I was living in a house of dancers and sunset cliffs and uh, a beautiful area of San Diego overlooking the ocean. And um, and uh, the one of the lady said, "I'm going again." She had already been. This was my girlfriend um, at the time, and I'm skipping a lot of steps, but basically living with these dancers. One of the dancers was my girlfriend, and uh, her name was Yogini, and. Um, she and we went to India. I had to earn whatever money I needed to to get the ticket and all that. And we went to India in 1979. And that's where I met Osho. Uh, and coincidences just never stop. He was talking about the White Lotus Sutra that was spoken of by Bodhidharma, who's considered the the integral, essential master of the martial arts, but not from a martial arts perspective, but from the true essence of a spiritual warrior who 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 was just like a lion, he brought out the, the most powerful quality of a lion, of a, of a Zen patriarch. He was, he was the true original, like who everybody thinks of as the essence of Zen, but all martial artists, you know, refer to Bodhidharma as. There's even Taoist um, movement sequences of Qi Kung that are, that are attributed to Bodhidharma. So, um, it's just, you know, it was interesting. That's so the first seat, the first time I ever sat with Osho. And then that was so funny. The first time I ever sat with Osho in October of 19, uh, 1979, sitting in the auditorium, I had the experience again that I had lost when I had that Satori. I was right back in that space again for a whole hour and a half sitting with him. I was one, you know, it was like, one with everything for an hour and a half. Of course, the minute it was over and I walked out, it was gone again. And I went, oh my God, this guy has it. 
this guy has it because when I sat with him, it immediately tapped back into that field, that um, indescribable field. And I said, this is the guy I got to I got to do my work with so I can uh, tap it in it. And, and then funny enough, <clears throat> that was the first time I ever saw him. The last time I ever saw him, he just looked at me and I kind of disappeared in that look. And then two weeks later, he was gone. He left the world. And that was the last time in India. I had to leave about a week before that happened, uh, India. And then a week later, he was gone. And I knew it. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew he was gone. Uh, and um, But it took four years after that for me to fully realize it. But I still attribute it to him because um, it was in that moment where I lost all hope. And I was falling into this... Um, endless abyss of sheer hopelessness. And I thought about him because I thought, oh, this is the moment I'm leaving my body. Because I just gave up. I just said, I'm never going to find it. I'm never going to get it. I mean, imagine four years after he leaves and I'm still not tapped into that. And I just thought of him. And I thought that's the one person in my life who truly, truly, truly I felt was just a goodness, just a pure goodness to me. And then something, then that, then, something, <laughs> then I, I, years later, I realized I fell through a black hole and then the white hole came and this, all this grace descended on me and I got clear about what I needed to do. And I, um, you know, literally saw that I had 12 points for staying in Italy and 13 for going back to America. And I wrote them all down and I said, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go do my work now. And ever since then, um, that strange experience, I have been tapped into this higher consciousness field that you asked me about earlier. And, uh, you know, but on that note, I want to say that um, the way I see the new man happening, which is what Osho taught always, Zorba the Buddha. And now I see why. The way I see that happening for me is I can sit and have a cup of coffee with somebody and talk about anything ordinary and just be an ordinary guy like anybody else. But I can also tap into what the Buddhist tapped into. And I think that's what the new man is. It's a lot more user friendly. And I believe at this time on the earth that even couples can now be enlightened together and, and, and soon some, some families. And eventually it's just going to spread through all of humanity. Um, but I think that's why the world is in the place it's in and so much tumultuousness is happening because a lot of the darkness is disappearing and being exposed and being put out there and being put in the spotlight. And once the darkness is put to the light, it's not dark anymore. It's exposed. So there, that's uh, what I can say on that.